Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Kingston man charged in St. Anne robbery. A man has been charged with robbery with aggravation and possession of prohibited weapon after he allegedly held up a man in Ultra St. Anne on Tuesday, November 22, 2022. Charge is 45-year-old Steve Johnson, otherwise called Mickey, a mason of Seaview Gardens in Kingston 11. Reports from the Ultra S police are that about 11.40 p.m., Johnson and another man allegedly held up the complainant and robbed him of Jamaican $4,000. The alleged robbers then reported the escape on foot in the area. On Thursday, December 22, the complainant was walking in Ultra S Town Center when he spotted Johnson. He alerted the police and pointed out Johnson to them. Johnson was then arrested and later charged. Local footballer charged with assault conspiracy. A local footballer is facing multiple charges after he allegedly stole a teammate's check and forced him to make false reports to the club's administration. Charge is 19-year-old Devante Walker of Fairview Drive in Kingston. He has been charged with assault at common law, being in possession of a prohibited weapon, using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony and conspiracy. Reports from the Olympic Gardens Police are that about 7.30 p.m. on Thursday, December 8, another player at the football club received his monthly wages via check. The player reportedly placed the check in his pocket and left his belongings in the player's changing room. Upon his return, the check could not be found. After receiving the report, the police launched an investigation and Walker was named as a suspect. During the investigations, CCTV footage was unearthed and it reportedly showed a man believed to be Walker cashing the missing check at a wholesale about 7.45 p.m. on Thursday, December 8, 2022. Walker is also accused of calling the complainant to a location in Kingston 11 where he allegedly held him at gunpoint and forced him to report to the club that the money had been returned. He also allegedly threatened him not to return to training. Upon the conclusion of their investigations, detectives arrested Walker and charged him on Tuesday, December 27. Lawyer for murder accused peeve over issue of outstanding documents. The St. James Parish Court has set February 1, 2023 as a committal hearing date for two men accused of the October 9th shooting death of 21-year-old Garrett Leslie for a ruling transfer their case to the St. James Circuit Court for trial. Ronaldo Stone and Jerome Foster, who are charged with murder in relation to Leslie's death, were remanded following their court appearance on Wednesday, December 21st, after being given the new court date by presiding parish judge Sasha Marie Ashley. During the court proceedings, the prosecution revealed that it was not ready to proceed as several documents, to include the post-mortem report and the scene of crime statement, have not yet been submitted for the case file. It was also disclosed that the investigating officer was absent from court due to illness. However, the defendant's attorney, Henry McCurdy, complained that the file should have been completed ahead of the court hearing, particularly since the men had previously been denied bail due to the incident reportedly taking place while they were facing a separate murder charge. Quite frankly, it is unfair to have persons in custody be charged and then you are coming to say you have things outstanding. While I do understand that they are before the court for another murder charge and their offense is alleged to have been committed while they were on bail and the bail act speaks to that, their liberty should not be taken away willingly and it is unfair for the accused men and to their family members, McCurdy told Judge Ashley. It is just sad that after they have seen so long in custody, they are still being told that things are outstanding and that the officer is on sick leave. Once you are sick, your case is assigned to someone else to complete. And if I am sick, the judge will say, find an ex-lawyer to do the case, McCurdy added. What I do know is that particularly in these matters, there is a team of officers who work so that the investigating officer being ill should not hamper the completion of the file, Judge Ashley replied, adding, that she would grant the prosecution's request for more time in order to secure the completed post-mortem report. The judge subsequently set February 1 as the committal hearing date for Stone and Foster to be brought back to court. Allegations are that on October 9, Leslie and other committee members were at a bar in Germantown, St. James, when a group of men drove up in a white Toyota Vis motor car. Three men alighted from the vehicle and opened fire on the group hitting Leslie and four other persons before escaping in the vehicle. The police were summoned and the victims were rushed to the Connor Regional Hospital, where Leslie was pronounced dead and the others were admitted. Subsequent investigations led to Stone and Foster being taken into custody and later charged with Leslie's murder. 
Green calls for support to tackle crime in St. Elizabeth. Member of Parliament for St. Elizabeth Southwestern Floyd Green is calling for more operational support from police here, even as recent incidents of crime have left residents and himself concerned. I think we also need external resources from the region to do specified operations where they come in and try to find the people who are causing the challenges. I don't believe that a lot of people are involved in criminality in and around the parish, so I think the police should be able, with the help of the citizens, to find the persons, the criminals, Green told reporters on Wednesday. His comments follow two recent murders in Williamsfield and Bruceville, both in his constituency. In the latest incident, a mechanic, Sanjay Foster, 34, otherwise called Shampoo, was shot dead by a gunman at a shop on Monday night in the Williamsfield area. A police report said about 9.30 p.m., Foster was at the shop when gunmen pounced from the outside of the building and fired one shot, hitting him. The injured man was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. On November 20, a construction worker, Craig Ebanks, 42, was shot to death in Bruceville, near Banbury Hall, adjoining Williamsville. A police report said about 2.30 a.m., Ebanks was found suffering from gunshot wounds in the white Honda CRV motor car with the engine running on a roadway in the area. Efforts to get an update on the incident from the St. Elizabeth Police were unsuccessful up to mid-afternoon on Wednesday. Green said the occurrences are alarming. We are very concerned about the increase in murders in the area. We are not used to these sort of violent incidents, and we want to ensure that this does not become a regular occurrence in our neck of the woods. St. Elizabeth has always been a very safe parish, and this side has always been very safe as well, he said. Green added that he has been in contact with the police to give support and lobby for more security operations in the area. I have had discussions with the superintendent, Kenneth Chin, in relation to increased presence in and around the area and more operations and for greater support from the high command, he said. It is very important that people who have information shared with the police. We have kept St. Elizabeth safe over the years by people being willing to tell the police what they know, he added. When asked if he is concerned about a personal shortage affecting the St. Elizabeth police, Green said he believes the issue will be resolved. I definitely believe that we need more boots on the ground and my expectation is that out of the last set of graduates, as a number of them would have come to St. Elizabeth. Clearly, steps have taken to reopen a training center in St. Elizabeth, so there's an expectation that we will get additional boots on the ground, he said. Superintendent Chin told the recent sitting of the local municipality that the Christmas season, despite decreased resources, with about 30 less police than we had last year at this time, we have more crime, so that's part of our challenge going into the Christmas season. First, as to the possible reasons for the decreased personal numbers, Chin identified retirement, resignations, and medical reasons as major factors. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.